So this is our third week in the Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. And I know the first week I asked how many of you had heard of it, and almost all the hands went up. Um, but if you haven't, we have the book in the bookstore, and we're in the middle of the series. So you're, you're here at a good time. And in addition, uh, Veronica Wolf, is Veronica here today? No. Um, she came up to me uh, last week, and Veronica is a coach and has facilitated many groups and really enjoys facilitating discussion groups, um, book study types of groups. So even though we didn't start at the beginning, she asked if she could start that uh, midway. And so tomorrow night at 7 in the upper room of the education building, um, you can meet with Veronica and discuss this third agreement and then next week the fourth, and then you can decide as a group if you want to start over and do one and two. So great way to go deeper with the teachings that uh, we're laying out with these agreements. And they're big, aren't they? Have you been practicing the agreement week to week? Yeah, and they, they dovetail with each other. And so when you practice, I'm impeccable with my word, and then it, you start practicing, I don't take things personally or don't take anything personally. It, it, they really work together, don't they? Um, and this week, we're not making any assumptions. Because we all know what it means to assume, right? What happens when we assume? Yeah, we commit a suicide. <laughs> <laughs> and a suicide kills conversations, and it can wound relationships, and it can even end relationships. You know, we can run on these ridiculous assumptions, sometimes about a single word. The difference in the English language, we have lots of words, right, that mean multiple things. And it's easy to make assumptions around even just a word. There was a young boy, he was in the foyer of his Christian church, and he was looking at this plaque. His name was Alex. He was about seven years old. And the pastor happened to see him, and nobody else was there yet. And he saw how the boy was really, you know, very seriously trying to figure this thing out, looking at all these names, and there were American flags alongside the plaque. So the pastor kind of came over to him and stood beside him and looked at the plaque with him. And he said, good morning, Alex. And Alex says, good morning. And Alex says, what is this? And the pastor says, why, Alex, that's all the names of the people, the men and women, the good committed men and women who died in the service. <laughs> You're so quick. So Alice gets a little trembly, and they're both still looking at the plaque. And his voice is barely audible when he says, which one? The 9.30 or the 11.30? And you know how it goes for us, right? That's just one example of a zillion examples of how we can operate on different definitions, different ideas of what's going on, different ideas of what's meant. That's why these four agreements that are really all about communication and interpretation are so key to creating harmonious relationships, to building communities and families and partnerships and couples to be the best that we can be. You know, so many marriages end because of poor communication. It's not that there's not love there. It's not that there's not really strong bonds there that could really last a lifetime of, of great companionship and spiritual growth. But yet somehow our communication breaks down because we don't practice things like the four agreements, or we don't know about them, or we get unskillful, and then we make a ton of assumptions, and we end good relationships because of that. Anybody relate to that? Anybody been down those roads or seen that or known anybody? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> some of you have two hands raised up. <laughs> know that one really well. So what happens when we make assumptions? You know, what is it that we're actually doing? What we often do is we just create truth. Because, you know, we're in this world where things move really fast. And I don't know if you've noticed, but in our world today, in our country today, in the media today, there's a lot of made up stuff, right? And I think we all kind of tend to do it because we've sort of collectively made an agreement that it's okay, that things are moving really fast. And so if you don't know, just make it up and keep going. 
<laughs> right? And then we, but the problem is, it's not just that light, because then we make it up, we believe it, we cling to it, and we operate from it. And it wasn't even true. Or maybe it wasn't true, we don't even know. <laughs> and then so we're all running around with our own versions of all these different things that we've made up, right? No wonder we have a sense of divisiveness with one another. No wonder we're not really coming to that place of understanding. And that's really the spiritual grounding of this agreement, is really about understanding. It's coming to understanding. I love the prayer of St. Francis. Do you? You know the prayer of St. Francis? In the second verse, he says, O oh, divine master, help me so that I may seek. I'm sorry, no, that's not the way it goes. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be understood as to understand. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not seek so much to be understood as to understand. So if we, as divine beings, put that first, put our, our desire to understand first above our desire to be understood, we all want to be understood. It's okay. You will be understood. Don't worry. You don't have to throw that out. But if we put the other first, the other idea first, that what I'm really about in this world as a spiritual being bringing forth the spiritual goodness onto this earth and making change and being a part of that change and being a part of creating what it is that I really want to see and experience in my everyday life and all the interactions when I look around and see how systems are working and institutions are working, that I really want the sense of understanding that we must ourselves be the understanding. In order to be the understanding, we must seek understanding. We must seek truth and not stop at just making stuff up. See, that's kind of the collective agreement. We've all sort of gotten lazy and lapsed into this old agreement that it's the MSU agreement, make stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> and we've all sort of agreed to it, I, I think, in many ways. I mean, I don't know about you, but I know in ways that I'm making stuff up and I'm operating on my made stuff up idea and thinking it's, it's true until I become aware again and reminded again, oh yeah, don't make assumptions. <laughs> that's what I, my guiding light for this week, don't make assumptions. And that's what I'm offering to you, that each week we really take these up and really work with them throughout the week. And then we'll find those places, those old agreements will break down when we say yes to this agreement. So that MSU agreement will start to break up a little bit. And we won't all necessarily, or at least we won't, those of us who say yes to this agreement, won't be making stuff up so much. <laughs> because when we make stuff up and then we operate from it, it gets worse. Because there's not only words that are attached to it, but actions, right? And so then this becomes like this sort of truth. And we're all running around with our own sort of truths that are a bunch of opinions that we've made up. <laughs> no wonder, right? <laughs> no wonder we've got so much of this going on in our world but we can be a part of the solution. We can be a part of the healing. We can be a part of the revealing of the shadow and illumination of that through this work, through this saying yes, through our unity principles. And in this case, specifically what we're working with, the four agreements. Our assumptions go viral as soon as we hit send or post. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> and then people have opinions about that, right? And then they make stuff up around that. We have another agreement that's the, the righteous agreement, that I must be right. In order to be sort of validated or visible, I must be right. Anybody ever get stuck on being right? <laughs> yeah, a wave goes through the room. <laughs> Right, and so that righteous agreement, that thing about being right, is, is pure ego, right? Right? <laughs> See, I wanted you to validate. <laughs> and so when we do that, you know, we defend our position and we kind of dig our heels in a little bit more to our position. And the truth is, that's not really the way of spirit, is it? The way of spirit is more open than that. It's softer than that. It's a, it's a willingness to kind of look and be curious together and say, hmm, well, that's my experience. That's what I've been thinking. That's how I've been operating. But how about you? 
you know, what's the heart of your faith? What's the value behind your ideologies or your political ideas? Those are the th kinds of questions to, that bring us out of the whole you, 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 <laughs> and into the, oh, here we meet as divine, spiritual, human, amazing beings, right? Here we meet soul to soul, spirit to spirit, heart to heart. And then we can have room to have those kinds of conversations because we keep having these categorical kinds of assumptions about one another, right? That if you have certain political and re religious beliefs, then you're this way and you're just all lumped together. <laughs> Or if you act or do this, then you must have those political or religious beliefs, you know? And so we're so eager to put these labels on one another and to stop the possibilities of connection. Who knows? Your best friend could have a very different ideological outlook. But how would you ever know <laughs> if you don't create that bridge, test the assumptions that you've had or that you've been holding about them? In Proverbs, it says, a fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. <laughs> so we don't want to be fools, do we? <laughs> the other agreement, one of the old agreements that sort of breaks down as we make this agreement, is the agreement, the mind reading agreement. Anybody have the mind reading agreement in their relationships? <laughs> you know it well, right? If you loved me, you would know what I want. <laughs> if you love me, you would know I don't like that. If you love me, you'd know how I feel. If you knew me well enough, I wouldn't have to say that. I wouldn't have had to explain. You know how we do, right? Is it just me? <laughs> and so if we could just let go of the mind reading agreement and just let ourselves ask for what we want, Share how we feel. It's revolutionary, and it's so simple. Right? There was a man who was called into his boss's office. He was supposed to meet with him the next day at 3 o'clock. And he started to spin about what he could possibly be wanting, his boss. And so he started to think about the man who was going to go in. He started to think about the proposal he had rec recently written and how he felt rushed at the end, and he thinks he might have made some mistakes. And so he th thinks, oh, my boss is probably going to point out the mistakes I made. And then he remembers that this new woman has been hired, and he's not sure where she's going to be placed. And he begins to wonder, hmm, maybe I'm being replaced. And then he starts to worry about his family. And what will he tell his family when he gets fired tomorrow? At the, at the meeting, and so he's just all tied up in knots, right? Worried, doesn't sleep all night. Got all this running. And he goes in for the meeting at 3 o'clock, and his boss said, I just wanted to thank you. You did such a great job on that proposal, and you got it in on time, and it meant a lot to me. Yeah. The pain we create for ourselves, right? The crazy antics and gymnastics <laughs> that we make ourselves go through. Now, what could that man have done differently? Well, he could have made the agreement, don't make any assumptions. And if he was on that agreement, in that moment when the meeting was set up, he would have been telling himself, you don't know until 3 o'clock tomorrow what he wants, and there's plenty to do right here. And he would have been present to the moment of now. We also create a lot of difficulty for ourselves by casting into the future, and that's a lot of times what assumptions do too. That we're all worried about the story we've created that hasn't even happened and never will, but we've lived it out, and, you know, <laughs> lost years off of our lives, right? <laughs> by, by living in that future reality of MSU, stuff we made up, right? So instead, we can make this agreement. And if it's, you know, sometimes we're just, we're in the process, right? It doesn't mean like today, right now, I can stop making us, oh, well, it does, I, it's possible. I could stop making assumptions right now and never make one for the rest of our, for my life. And you, do, you could too, and all of us could. It's possible. It's in the realm of possibility because we dwell in the possible, right? We dwell in that spiritual place that knows that all things are possible through God. 
And when we walk this path, all things really are possible. And when we know that and we breathe that and we live that, it brings us up a little bit higher and we start to act and speak and move about the world in that higher place, on that higher ground. So it is possible. And for some of us, sometimes the step and the way is a little bit more gradual to getting to the full embodiment of whatever that principle is that we're working toward. So for the man, maybe in the scenario with work, maybe he couldn't have, have gone all the way there to just be completely present. Maybe his mind would have still been a little busy on it. But what else could he have done? What if he just called his boss up or went into the office and said, hey, I'm feeling kind of nervous about the meeting tomorrow. I just want to know, did I make a mistake on the proposal? Wouldn't that have been easy? And it could have distilled all of that. So sometimes it's just the direct communication is all we need. <laughs> and there's always a way. There's always a way. There's always a way for this direct communication, if not with the person that we want to have it with. And with prayer, we also get into that space of present moment. And it takes us into that beautiful, did you feel how lovely that was when we were all in meditation together today? It was just that we really were in the peace together. So thank you, Charlie, for bringing us in and Bobby for the beautiful reading because it really brought us to that place. And there we kind of sat together, rocked together in peace. Imagine if our world, if everybody in our world, if all of our politicians just rocked together in a little bit of peace. Yeah? It's a couple minutes of juicy silence. It doesn't take a lot to change the world. It really doesn't. How we think it does, and we think we have to like, do all these kinds of heroic things, I think. But no, it's like, no, I sat in, what did I do for the world this week? I sat in silence with my spiritual community for two minutes on Sunday. Now somebody else might say, oh, well that doesn't sound like much. You wanna see my to-do list? <laughs> but we won't make any assumptions, will we, about each other. So <clears throat> if we expect the best, if we make the most generous assumptions that we can make about one another, or make the, not so much assumptions, but, but extend the most generous interpretations of one another's words and actions and our own, what a world we create, you know? So when you find yourself making assumptions, whether they're, supposedly positive or negative or whatever it is, if you can instead say, well, since I can't test it at this moment, if I'm, for now I'm just gonna make the most generous interpretation of that scenario, of that individual, of what was said, of what was done, of what I said, of what I did, and give some spaciousness to it, that brings that prayerful energy in. And it brings it in to, to bring up then what truth needs to arise there. So sometimes we don't have to, you know, test every little thing because this is part of the reason why we make stuff up, right? Because it's like, well, I can't test everything. I can't test every assumption that comes along. Some things I got to just go. And sometimes we're going on a gut feeling and that's a little bit different because that is more aligned with the intuition and the power and the guidance of spirit. That's a different, that's not really an assumption. That's a following of guidance. So there may still be some things in our relationships that we still want to check out that are a part of whatever it is that we feel guided to understand about something. But if we put first to seek to understand versus to be understood, so much good will happen in our relationships. And that, I believe, is an important part of this agreement. So a lot of times it's categorical, you know, the kinds of assumptions we're making, as I've mentioned, about groups, right, about other. So it was the case with this um, scenario that happened in, the, in traffic. So there was a, a man who was just driving along, going to whatever destination. He was just driving the speed limit, going to his place. He was feeling pretty peaceful. But behind him was somebody who was not apparently feeling so peaceful. And she was going really fast, and she was tailgating them up and down the different roads. And when they came to this light, it was turning yellow, and he chose to stop. 
you know, it's always a choice in that moment, right? You can like accelerate through or you can stop. And he chose to stop. Well, this, as you could imagine, made somebody very stressful who's been tailgating him crazy. And so she, uh, they, they stop completely. So that means that her momentum was stopped for maybe all of two minutes. And in that two minutes, she raged and she was just, you know, really ha honking her horn, having a really hard time. She wasn't really paying attention. In fact, in all of it, she dropped her cell phone. So she bent down and here she heard on her window. And so she looks up and she looks into the face of a ser very serious looking, stern looking police officer. And he says, ma'am, get out of the car. She has to put her hands up. She gets handcuffed. She gets, you know, the old push into the police car. She goes and then she has to get fingerprinted and she gets booked and she's put in a cell and hours go by. She's thinking this seems like pretty severe punishment, right? <laughs> so after a while she's released and she goes to the front desk and there's the arresting officer and apparently he's a practitioner of the four agreements because of the way he spoke. He said, ma'am, I hope you don't take this personally. <laughs> He says, I have made an incorrect assumption. So she's wondering, what could it be? You know, and he says, you see, I was behind you when you were cursing a blue streak and flipping off the guy in front of you and all kinds of wild gestures were happening and you were honking your horn continuously at the red light. She says, yeah. <laughs> and he says, well, I happen to notice also the back of your car and on it, there were all these bumper stickers random acts of kindness. <laughs> what would Jesus do? <laughs> Peace on earth, love be loved. And naturally I assumed you had stolen the car. <laughs> <laughs> Now, we always like the jokes we find ourselves in best, don't we? <laughs> I have love and be loved on my car. I don't know what you have on your car, but uh, if I ever catch myself in one of those scenarios, I'll uh, beware the knock. <laughs> and the assumptions, right? But we do this, don't we? So we categorize one another. So if we are indeed carrying the banner of love and kindness and harmony, people in the world will assume we are going to act that way and speak that way. And as human beings, there's times we're gonna fall short. It's possible we could fall short of our ideals, right? And so when, when we do, what do we need to do but forgive ourselves? be kind to ourselves, extend the most generous interpretation we can of what's going on for us. Stop making assumptions about ourselves and everyone around us and vow to make the world a better place by keeping the kinds of agreements like this one. Individually too, you know, we can tend to uh, limit ourselves, right? Underestimate ourselves, overestimate ourselves, other ways that we might limit ourselves. There was a, a couple of friends, Sally and Anna, and they became spiritual partners, practice partners together because they had kind of opposite assumptions that they would make in their work. So Sally would tend to overestimate what she could do and she would take on all kinds of projects and she usually didn't have the time to complete them all and then she would end up disappointing people. And Anna wouldn't take on as much, she was an artist, and she didn't always feel like she had the right skill or enough talent or skill to say yes. And so they started partnering with each other, and when a project would come Sally's way, she'd call up Anna and she'd say, help me talk through this. And she would help ask pointed questions so she could get clear on whether she should take that project on. And the same with Anna, that she would be encouraged. So I encourage you to find spiritual partnership here. You've got a room full of people who really work or desire to or intend to really work these principles. And so to make a connection with somebody and see if you could not be spiritual partners together, 
to check in with each other along the way, whether it be in holding this kind of agreement or something specific like this, some way that you make assumptions about yourself that you can call each other forward and into the fullness that you are meant to be, to stop making the limitations and holding yourself back from all that you are. So that can go a long way in any realm, right? If we have these kinds of partnerships or small groups, prayer groups and that kind of thing. So one last um, suggestion of what we can do, what we can take on when we are assuming. So for example, in interpersonal situations where we are assuming that somebody said something or did something or didn't do something or didn't say something and we've made meaning out of it. We can, ins- we can apply the work of Byron Katie. Anybody familiar with Byron Katie? And, yeah, and it's literally called The Work. So you can just look up Byron Katie, The Work, and you'll find these questions. But they're great guiding questions, especially for this agreement. And here's how it goes. Is it true, the assumption you're making, is it true? You ask yourself, is it true? Now, at first blush, we might think, yeah, it's true. But then the second question gets us a little clearer on that. Can I absolutely know it's true? Hmm, maybe not. (laughs) And then how do I react? What happens when I'm believing that it's true? So what's happening in us or what's happening through us, as us, when I'm believing it's true? And who would I be without that thought? Who would I be without that assumption? If I weren't holding that, who would I be? It changes everything. You can almost feel it, right? Even without taking an example. You can feel the shift that happens because it begins to open up. You begin to open up. And all that we're doing is shining the light of truth on something that was made up. And opening it up for ourselves to say, is it true? How do I know it's true? How do I feel when I'm holding this? How would, it, how would I be if I weren't? It it's, can really shift everything for us to use this kind of tool. So it, in the end, with this agreement, what we're really committing to is understanding and truth to really live in truth as much as we possibly can to the best of our ability. So let's know this. Let's know this commitment to truth that we're making by not making assumptions, by affirming it with all of our hearts together. Together, I don't make assumptions. I am committed to truth. And so it is. What a beautiful community we make when we make these kinds of agreements together. Bless you.